Okay, so now that we know the difference between compressible and incompressible fluids, let's actually take a step further and really get to the core definition of what the study of fluids is. So we know that liquids are incompressible fluids, right? These molecules, these liquid molecules cannot be compressed any further because the space between them are already so small. And that space being small is because each of these molecules, the molecular bond between the molecules, are strong enough to keep the molecules together, but not strong enough to where if you put your hand inside of it, they would stay together. So if you put your hand inside here and moved around, the bonds would just not be strong enough to overcome the force of your hand. Now on the other side, we have these compressible fluids, which are known as gases. And remember, gases, the gas molecules, take up space freely within their container. So they float and fly around, they bump into one another, they bump into the container of the wall. There's a key characteristic here, and that is both liquids and gases really take up the space within their container. Gases being especially important because they take up space freely in their container, whereas liquids eventually settle down into some type of state here where you do have some type of well-defined surface on top of the liquid. So examples of gases, obviously, you know, helium, if you pumped helium into a balloon, uh, the air that we breathe, uh, nitrogen, oxygen, all that stuff, those are gases because they take up space freely in the container. And then you have stuff like liquids, you know, water is a liquid, chocolate milk is a liquid, a milkshake is a liquid. Main difference between liquids is, and gases are really liquids are incompressible and gases are compressible. So let's get to the core idea of what fluids, the, the study of fluids really is. So the classification of fluids is really based on macroscopic systems. So macroscopic systems. Well, what the heck does that mean? macroscopic systems. Well, in order to really understand fluids, we've been looking at how each individual molecule interacts with other types of molecules, right? That is more or less kind of a microscopic, right? We're zooming into each molecule and trying to understand its molecular bonds, strengths, all that sort of stuff. But really, the study of fluids is not necessarily looking at each individual molecule in a liquid or a gas, but really a collection of molecules, right? All of these two cases, liquids and gases, we're looking at a bunch of molecules and, and seeing how they interact with one another and the container that they're contained in. In short, you know, we're not really concerned with each individual molecule of a substance, but rather a collection of these molecules and how groups of molecules would behave in various states or systems. And that in itself is really the study of fluid mechanics. So how do we actually define these macroscopic systems? Well, we already kind of have been, right? We've been looking at spaces and containers, right? We've been pouring liquids into a container and seeing how they would act. We've been injecting gases into a container and seeing how those molecules would react. And really, how we define each of these containers is by volume, right? We try to understand how much volume is taken up in a space or a container. And we try to understand the relationship between the fluid that is contained in that container and the volume that the liquid or gas takes up. But actually, let's take a closer look at volume, right? Volume is really the space defined in some type of a three-dimensional object or a three-dimensional shape. But how do we classify fluids using volume? Well, let's take a look at an example. So let's say we had a container and this container had one liter, so one liter of milk. And in some other container, we had one liter of, I don't know, water? Yeah, sure. So we have one container that has one liter of milk and one container that has one liter of water. Now, intuitively, we understand that milk is not water, but both of these substances, they are fluids. And more specifically, they are liquids. 
So how do liquids relate to volume? That really is the question here, right? What is that relationship like? Because both milk and water are taking up one liter of volume, but just because they take up the same type of volume does not mean they are the same type of liquid, obviously, right? So just because the volumes are the same in both of these containers for both of these substances, does that mean the two liquids are the same? Well, no. So how do we actually get to classifying or characterizing these liquids? Well, we do so using mass. And more specifically, mass density. And this right here is a really, really important part of fluid mechanics because everything that we've been studying so far with different containers and molecules and compressible and incompressible fluids, it's really the mass density that defines the difference between one type of fluid with another type of fluid, another type of gas, whatever else other types of fluids there are in the world. We use mass density to really define the difference or define each fluid independently from one another. So in the next video, we're actually going to take a look at mass density a little bit further. We're going to talk about volume, mass, and density. So see you then.